This is About to Drop, a podcast where I interview independent artists about music that they're about to release. In each episode, I'll have a conversation with a new artist to talk about where they came from, how they got started in music, and most importantly, what they're going to be releasing next. We'll cover all sorts of topics, including the writing process, recording, producing, and even things like marketing, branding, and promotion. So thanks for tuning in, and let's get started with the episode. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of About to Drop. I'm your host, Baro Avad, aka Vertigo, and I'm here today with Kyle Jordan. How's it going, man? We're going really well, as well as you can do in, uh, in quarantine, but pretty well. How's, uh, how's quarantine life going for you so far? We're about like 50-some days in now, right? <laughs> yeah, we are. We are definitely chugging away. By the way, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's it's nice to have something to do because you know we're, we're all kind of like <laughs> yeah. cooped up inside. So this is definitely a change of pace and uh, some some nice to do. Oh, for sure. But uh, yeah, I've been I've been recording a lot of music. I've been collaborating a lot, which is it's a it's a nice feeling. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So yeah, why don't we jump right in? Can you uh, tell me a little bit about uh, where you're from? How you got started with music and how you got started with your uh, like actual music career? Yeah, of course. Um, so I was born and raised on Long Island, um, which you can tell because I said on Long Island. Uh, <laughs> I know that's a big pet peeve of everybody here. Um, I moved into the city for a bit. I kind of lived in New York City. Uh, I, you know, I, I tried to make the rounds, but I was just too young and I didn't know enough people and I didn't know enough about how to market myself or really like make myself sound good, you know, cause that's mm-hmm. the number one part of being a musician. Um, but you know, I, I kind of pulled back a bit and then I went to college in Boston. I went to Northeastern and that was kind of where I really started picking up and, you know, playing live and meeting people. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I played at a couple of venues. Uh, I, I toured around with a country band, which is hilarious because if there's one thing people who know me know, I cannot stand country music. Uh-huh. It's just, it's my pet peeve, and I know I'm gonna I'm gonna bother people by saying that. But <laughs> please don't flame me too much. That's uh, it's just a, it's a thing. But uh, I was touring around with country band, uh, country artist uh, by the name of Lisa Coulter. She was phenomenal, um, and we ended up playing in Springfield. Uh, or we played in Springfield. We played in Maine. Um, we opened up for the Marshall Tucker Band, um, which was. You know, it sounds kind of interesting, uh, and then you drive three hours up there, and you're excited, and you're like, wait, everybody in that band has already died. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> and so, like, I felt that, but I was like, how many could be left? And it turns out, one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they were really nice, super talented, like, you know, we, we got to talk to them, we got, like, the VIP experience, so mm-hmm. that was really cool. And then I, I wanted to do my own thing. You know, I didn't want to be part of a country band forever, um, as you guys can probably tell, as everybody listening can tell. <laughs> and, uh, and so I moved back to New York. Uh, and, you know, in the process of moving back to New York, I just kind of set my mind to it. And I said, I'm going to make an EP. Um, and through the process of learning how to record and edit and mix and master and all that, I, you know, I started building a bit of a following um, and then I kind of transferred that following to New York. And when I finally released the EP, it was, you know, it, it felt like a big deal. Finally, it, mm-hmm. it felt like I was a real musician. Okay. Um, so a bunch of questions I had. So, you know, how did you get started in music in the first place? Like, do you have like a musical family? Um, were you taking you know, piano lessons as a little kid or how'd you get started? Yeah. Well, actually it's, uh, it's very interesting. Cause like, I, I feel like, I stumbled into it, you know, and I feel like everybody can say they stumbled into music and that's like how you get into it. But I started off just, I was always like, I loved singing. I, my parents took me to rent like the show tune and I was Mm -hmm. like, yeah, love that. Um, And, you know, that was always a thing. And then they tried to put me in piano lessons. I hated piano lessons. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't until I was around 13 or 14 um, my dad was always a guitar player. He always took lessons. Um, he taught my younger brother, who then taught me. So, you know, my six-year younger brother uh, was like a guitar virtuoso. I mean, he is unbelievable. 
taught me a little bit, and I just started writing and playing and the rest, as they say. Were you always interested in like? <laughs> were you always interested in like, like the writing music, or were you more interested in like playing an instrument? Um, it was really just as a way to like express myself. You know, I, I always tried to sing and you know be musical in some way. Um, and then I guess when I was like fourteen or fifteen, uh, I really started writing lyrics, and they weren't great. I, you know, I still don't remember. Like lyrics. First <laughs> lyrics are rough. Mm-hmm. Um, Can you hear me over there? Oh, can you hear me now? Oop. Are you still there? Yeah, I, I'm still here. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you now. You're starting to come back. Are, are in. we back? I think so. Yeah, that was that was bizarre. Um. Weird. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, what I was uh, what I was saying is, I I always was kind of musical. I always tried to sing, and you know, I, I played whatever I could. <laughs> Did it happen again? Oh, I can still see you. Oh, okay. Um, but I guess around the time I was fourteen or fifteen, I started. Started. Can you just writing, you know, rough lyrics and, you know, trying my best. And as time went on, I started to kind of like find my groove. Um, and it was just one of those things where, you know, it's practice, practice, practice. I remember I listened to an interview with, uh, with Ed Sheeran. Um, and he was just like, you got to kind of keep pumping at the well until all the, the dirty water's out. And I guess eventually you kind of hit like the, the clean water. And that's what I feel like I've kind of hit the clean water by now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it, it, it started off as just a way to kind of express myself, but then I played it for a couple of people and they played it for a couple of people and, you know, people started to really kind of talk about it and enjoy it. And so I figured I, I, I owed it to myself to kind of give it a, give it a shot. Mm-hmm. And about how old were you when you decided you wanted to release your own music? Was this after touring with the country band? So the first song I ever released was in 2016, which was the year I moved to Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, I, I reached out to uh, a local producer cause I didn't know, you know, my ass from my elbow for, mm-hmm. for, for that. Uh, I had no idea how to record. I didn't know what to, what to expect. Uh, and so they, you know, they, they kind of saw that I didn't know what I was doing. They, they recorded everything and they, they did a really great job. You know, it, it ended up sounding a little country ironically. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just one of those songs where like you, I wrote it in my bedroom. It was like, you know, two in the morning and I brought it to your producer and he was just like, Oh cool. We can make something out of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the first song I ever dropped was in 2016. And I don't think I, you know, it, in hindsight, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to promote it. I didn't know how to, you know, say what I wanted from a producer. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it, it kind of started my path as a musician, you know, it started me on a path to being like, I could do this for a living. Right. Okay. I think that's really common for, you know, when you get started to, you just make mistakes not knowing you're making mistakes, you know? Oh yeah. There's, there's no, there's no, oh, yeah. there's no uh, career path that works for everybody or, you know, you, you kind of have to like figure it out as you go. So I think we've all been there. Yeah, for sure. And, and, you know, like, there are plenty of people who are just very willing to be like, you know, I'll take your money. I'll make you famous. You know, like mm-hmm. I definitely worked with a producer or two who was in it just to kind of like get a payday or, you know, get some rights to a song or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the first producer I ever worked with, you know, he saw, I was like, you know, I was a, I was a kid, you know, I was 16 or 17 and I signed something I shouldn't have. I gave the song away and then he was like, all right, I'm not working on this anymore. So, wow. you know, it's just like one of those like horror stories that I feel like everybody has one, but you know, it was, it was that day that I was like, 
I need to learn how to do this on my own. For sure. I, you know, as someone on the other end of that, like work with, working with artists, I don't understand why you would do that. <laughs> you know, you, Oh, absolutely. It, yeah. It's terrible for your reputation. Like you can't build a business like that. I don't get it. Exactly. And then can't. there's people like me who are going to be, you know, five years later on a podcast being like, you know, fuck this guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause I was a kid. Like I didn't know anything. And the song wasn't great. I'm not going to say it was going to be like a top one hit, but to me at 17, I was like, I made it. Mm -hmm. You know, he was like, I work at, at uh, BMG records. Um, you know, I'm going to get this to the people who work with Streisand. I was like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it sounds good to me. Um, and, you know, before it, it, it moved a million miles a minute and, and then it stopped and I was just like, yeah, he got me, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you learned your lesson, and luckily you were super young when you did it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that's what I always say to people is, like, you got to read these things. You got to read documents that you sign. You got to know people um, who's, who are going to help you. You know, mm -hmm. everybody needs that, like, helping hand. Sure. Um, and you got to be able to, like, work with people that you trust or that have, like, a good reputation, too. Absolutely. Um, yeah. so, so how would you describe the, the sound of the music you make? So you said the first single was a little country and you have said a few times you don't like country. So how, how would you describe <laughs> the sound of your music? Yeah, it's, it's definitely not country. I could say that. <laughs> um, I guess I, the, the best way I've been kind of wrestling with it cause you know, I feel like it's a buzzword to say you're alt pop. Um, everybody kind of wants to say they're alt pop or, you know, to, to the left of pop, but I would say it's kind of like dark pop. Um, it's got that, you know, definitely clubby sound, but you know, it's, it's a little sadder. It's a little more withdrawn. It kind of feels a little more uh, contemplative. Um, but that's been my style so far, definitely with the EP that I released, uh, you know, my first EP. And then the next song was, you know, it kind of sounded like an old school jazz tune mm -hmm. um, or like a R and B gospel kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but my newer music, it's a little more upbeat, you know, less less sad sounding. I figure people need a little more levity, especially right now. Right now, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, I'm trying to make, you know... <clears throat> um, yeah, no, I figured it. I could focus less on the music that you're like, you're going to sit alone in your room and listen to, and more on music that it's going to be like, I want to shake my ass, you know? Mm -hmm. Like... <laughs> That's what you. <laughs> it's the that's the dream. Um, and uh, do you do you perform often? Uh, as much as I can, you know. I, it was it was weird because like when I moved from Boston, I didn't know if I was going to be able to perform in New York City or you know anywhere. Um, but yeah, I tried to perform at least you know once or twice a week, you know, in New York City, you know, local bars and stuff like that. Um, you know, I played the the Knitting Factory, which is you know, iconic, yeah. like a mecca in, in New York City. Yeah, um, and then you know I played a bunch of a bunch of local places also, but uh, Knitting Factory is definitely you know top ten places I've ever performed. Like mm -hmm. top three maybe. It, it, it's just a uh, you you kind of just get the energy from that building. Like it, there's nothing like it. Yeah, when I was uh, my high school band played there a couple times. Did they did they move locations or, or is it still the same place where they have like a, a venue on each floor? I don't know about a venue on each floor. I I know there's a comedy club up front and there's a stage out back and I, I know a couple people got lost in the comedy club and they were like, I don't care who I'm here to see. This dude's funny. And I was like, that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, you walk in and you just kind of like you can kind of feel that people have performed there. Like people you've heard of have performed at the knitting factory. And it was just like, you know, it, it felt like a blessing to be on that stage. For sure. Um, do you, do you play with like a full band or do you do um, like a stripped down thing or do you play to backing tracks? Um, yeah. So I, I play kind of like a cheer, you know, like a, it's, it used to be just kind of like acoustic in me. Uh, I brought in a loop pedal just to kind of give it some more body, especially if I'm playing bigger venues um, you know, I don't want to just be me and my guitar. Um, but yeah, I, it's mainly just me. Uh, otherwise it's 
me and you know one other person either playing guitar or like cajon mm -hmm. you know I, I i try to keep it relatively stripped down um i've always been open to playing with a band but it's just never been something that i've brought together it, it's tough logistically too oh yeah just get absolutely people to, their schedules to line up yeah um, so you had yeah. so you had mentioned that you recently put out an EP, uh, Lost. Can you tell us a little bit about that? How it came together, and you know, any any fun details? Yeah. So Lost was actually it was just an idea I had when I was in Boston. I was like, I want to put out an EP. I just want to like get these songs that I've been writing. I think I had like four hundred or five hundred songs that had just not been recorded. Nobody had ever really heard them, uh, and I wanted to just get like five or six and put them on an EP and get it out there. Uh, and so that was kind of like my challenge to myself. You know, I was, I was finishing up, I was in my last year of college. Um, and so I wanted to teach myself how to produce it, how to mix it, master it, you know, edit everything down, get a good sound and have like a strong, like motif in my, in my uh, pro producing. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it was over the course of like two and a half, three years uh, you know, where I was just kind of like editing and, you know, some of these songs are like from 2017 and I just released them in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was just, it was a learning experience from end to end. And by the end of it, you know, I, I kind of like picked up enough skills along the way that I feel more comfortable almost as a producer than as a writer. Um, it, it kind of built from the ground up. And I think that's what's so special about it to me. It wasn't just like a project that I made or something that I kind of like slapped together. It was from the ground up, like foundationally music and then built from there. Mm -hmm. And how long did the process take? I mean, that's a lot of different songs to kind of sift through. Um, how'd you go about picking which ones made the EP and, and which ones didn't? Yeah. Uh, well, so it's interesting. The first two songs that are on the album uh, were written specifically for the album because <laughs> I, I had a bunch of songs that I was working on and I was like, oh, this would sound good. And then, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it just didn't work out. Um, and then I, I started writing Chemistry, which is, you know, the first single I released that ended up being on the EP. Um, and I got this just, it was like a fun little chorus idea where it was like, I need you to love like you mean it, say that you need me. Uh, and I was like, oh, that could be, that could be a cool little chorus. You know, it's like poppy and fun. And then I didn't touch it for a couple months. Uh, I met my current girlfriend and like three days later, mm -hmm. I wrote the entire song. Like it finished, yeah. produced it, edited. So it's kind of like the, the muse kind of thing. Like, you know, just the inspiration took over. I had to get it out and then it was done. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it needed tiny, tiny little edits to, to really make it mesh together. But most of the song was done in like 24 hours. Wow. Um, the rest I picked from either, you know, really old songs or just songs that kind of like felt important or fit together, you know, with a, with a similar style or vibe. Um, but yeah, I mean, two of the five songs were just, songs that I thought worked, uh, and, and built for the, for the EP. Very cool. Um, what, what's the uh, typical process like, um, <clears throat> as far as like writing to, to producing recording? Um, I know it's always a little bit different, but like in, in general, like you tend to write the, the song first and then build up a production for it or is it the other way around? Right. Yeah. I, I feel like that's, a question I get a lot where it's like, what do you write first? What do you build first? And I never know how to answer that because it's so different per song. Um, you know, like for my first couple of songs, it was always, I, I got a, a lyric in my head and then I'd get the chords and I'd just put that together, but that didn't feel like enough for, for what I was building. You know, I didn't want it to just be acoustic music or, you know, I, I needed it to kind of pop a little bit more. Um, and so it started to become, I, I, I need a chorus, you know, I need this chorus. I need this idea that, you know, that earworm kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then once I got that earworm, I would build out from there. Uh, and that's definitely how the EP was made. You know, I'd find like the, the catchy part 
and then I'd build the rest out. Um, hmm. And then, you know, recently it's really been like, like, I'll find a cool chord progression, I'll put it in my DAW, and then I will sing over that a hundred times until I find the catchy, <laughs> the catchy oh, wow, part. Okay. Um, what I used to actually say is like, um, I, I try to write lyrics that you can imagine, you know, like a teenage girl writing in her like Instagram bio, <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's just, <laughs> That's good. it's That's just good. like poppy enough where you're like, Oh, okay. That could mean something. Maybe it does. <laughs> That is fucking brilliant. <laughs> um, so yeah, well, go, going back to the, uh, the, you know, your your process. Do you have a particular song that you are especially excited about on the EP, or one that's done better than the others, just in like streaming or, or in response? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I got that. That might have. Uh... That was, that was breaking up a little bit. Oh, did it cut out? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Um, yeah, so I was saying, is, is there a song on the EP that you're especially proud of or uh, you got the best response from? Yeah, I think that was, it, interestingly enough, chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just like, uh, I think people really resonated with how stripped down and bare it was. You know, <laughs> a lot of people... They, they were like, it gave me like chills and not in like a, like a, Ooh, it gave me chills way. It's more like, it's like a little bit creepy, which mm -hmm. is the way I wanted it. You know, it's like industrial and it kind of feels like it's very close up on you. Um, and you know, it was supposed to be very raw and very like, I, I guess passionate. Mm -hmm. I, I know that's like a word that a lot of people cringe for. Um, but yeah, like it, it was supposed to be just one of those songs that it kind of feels like I'm singing it into your ears. And I think that kind of, it, it resonated with people in a very specific way. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to a lot of Phineas, who is, uh, I mean, for... Oh, he's incredible. I'm, yeah. I'd be shocked if anybody doesn't know him, but yeah, uh, Billie Eilish's brother produces all of her songs. Um, but I was listening to his solo stuff, and what he does is he'll strip down everything. You know, the first thing will be just his voice a lot of the time. And... You know, it's just so crisp and clear because there's nothing else clouding out that uh, that space in the mix, mm -hmm. and so you get that kind of like very intimate feeling. It feels like he's really just singing it directly into your ear, and I just thought that's that's such an interesting, you know, cool production trick. Um, you know, focusing on the dynamics first, and then everything else kind of coming after that. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're when you're creating these productions and mixes, do you do you have that kind of in mind as you're going in, or do you let let it kind of happen naturally as you're as you're working through the song? Yeah, I feel like it kind of happens naturally. Um, like, th definitely for chemistry, I heard that like I wanted to be up close to the to the mic and I wanted to be you know pretty bare with it. But you know, for other songs, there's a song I D L M I L, um, which I wrote it and I kind of had an idea of what I wanted. Uh, and this isn't literally exactly when I discovered Splice. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I realized I could use other people's beats and stuff like that and, you know, whatever, put a put a loop in there. And so I got the main loop, the main, like, drum loop in the song, and that's when it all came together. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I it was kind of just following the process. And once I found one part that I could stick to, everything else followed that. Um, but it's definitely, yeah, there's no, like... Uh, equation there's no like formula for it yeah. and do you record everything and, and work out of out of your home or do you you know work or have a studio you work out of so hope, hopefully at some point I can have a, a better studio mm -hmm. uh, it's it's definitely out of my my home studio mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a little room that I put mattresses on the walls uh, no, <laughs> so work. that you can't hear that anything. It looks like somebody is like squatting in here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's uh, in my little den of music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's like a, it's a cramped little space that gets a little hot. Uh, and I feel like that kind of like breeds the creativity because you're like, if I don't write something, I have to stay in this room a little longer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, I I get it, man. Like my first little like studio, if you want to call it, was in my mom's basement. There was, was like tiny little desk and an old Dell computer, 
And just like over time, you know, it just grows and grows and grows. Yeah, and, and eventually you're like, God damn, I need to get like out of the, the <laughs> space. Because I, I remember I was in Boston and you could hear everything in that apartment. Like you could hear the metal pipes, mm-hmm. hear the couple upstairs like screaming at each other. And absolutely in a song or two on my EP, you fully hear my upstairs neighbors. And I was like, gives a character. I can't re-record that now. <laughs> That's real, man. That's some real stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's it's real world music mm-hmm. <laughs> but i feel like you know from from like a, a macro view of it it's like that's kind of how music is now it's not like it's not like you're you know going into a recording studio all the time or you you have a, a dedicated space i feel like a lot of it is just like i did this in my bedroom you know like if you think about like billy eilish you know she was huge she blew up this year mm-hmm. And her whole first album was in a bedroom, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, with the technology now, you can you can do it all. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, like the technology has gotten to the point where, like, you don't need to soundproof your room. You know, like the microphone does that for you. You know, most of the time, there's definitely, like I said, there's absolutely a couple screaming on a couple songs out there, but. <laughs> What can you do? It just gives a character. <laughs> it gives a character. You know, I wanted the rage to be a part of my mix. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um... <laughs> That's good. Um, so you had mentioned before that when you released your first EP or your first single, rather, that you you know right. didn't have any plan as far as how to how to release it or create some buzz or market it or anything. Um, what did you do differently um, when you? were gearing up to release your EP and and what things did you find worked right. the best? Yeah, well, so a lot of it was just like grassroots just talking to people cuz I feel like I feel like that's one of the most underrated things that, you know, people just kind of take for granted is like if you don't talk to people, nobody's going to hear your music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I I of course I found out about Submit Hub you know, since 2016, and that was a huge help, but not the biggest help. You know, mm-hmm. Submit Hub, it, it could be hit or miss. Um, but, you know, the the biggest push I got was just from talking to people on Instagram, reaching out to people on Facebook, and just saying, like, hey, if you like, you know, X artist, you might like me too. If you just want to give it a shot, that's fine. But if not, have a great rest of your day. And, you know, I'm not, like, aggressively, you know, like, hounding people. I'm just mm-hmm. saying, you know, like, I exist. And if you like my stuff, that's great. If not, I, I wish you the best. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, whether it was, like, getting on playlists that way or just getting, like, you know, what, what a lot of people call, like, the, the rabid fans or whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know, that's a big part of, of being a musician. You, you, you know, it's it's something I think a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to get on the radio and then people will hear me. It's like, no, I'm going to put my music in your face, yeah. you know. Um, what kind of, aside from Submit Hub and <clears throat> actually just talking to people one on one, did you try anything else as far as just like posting um, or using Facebook ads or doing music videos or anything like that? I kept you know my ad spending pretty low, um, which is definitely something I want to change. Um, you know, it was really out of necessity because I was just broke. I was <laughs> in college, um, but yeah, like I it was mainly just posting a lot and just trying to get on those like, you know, bigger pages on Instagram for sure. But you know, on Facebook too, um, just to have a wider audience that could potentially see my stuff, you know? And again, that, that all goes back to just being grassroots. Like there were, there were pages that I reached out to and I was just like, Hey, uh, I see you have a ton of followers and you're doing a great thing for music. And I, again, that's one of the things I always say is like, it's not what you can offer me. It's what I can offer you and what you are doing is a great thing. You know, like mm-hmm. I feel like just telling people like, Hey, you're doing a great thing for like local music that goes a long way with a lot of people. Cause that's really all they want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to support local music or, you know, small artists. And you know, that, that did go a long way with a lot of them. You know, I think my, one of my songs just passed uh, 15 or 16,000. Nice. Um, on Spotify and you know I owe that all to like 
you know, just people I met on Instagram. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think people can um, can smell it immediately when someone is just like, gimme, 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 <laughs> you know, like, put me on your page, play absolutely. with, you know. And especially if you if they're in a yeah. position to be like a, a blog or a playlister or something, and they're being bombarded with people all day, like they can spot that immediately. So I think it's important to absolutely be, and yeah to like to acknowledge what they do, uh, appreciate it, and also like have something of value for them. <laughs> and like you got to give to get right, so you have to be able to give them something of value before they can help you out. Yeah, absolutely. And I I, I was anything wrong with like you know whatever it is like if if they're like you shout me out i shout you out whatever that's that's fine mm -hmm. um it's just you know like i'll have people in my dms on instagram that are <laughs> that are literally they'll just link their video and nothing else so i'm like who do you think you are yeah. <laughs> like, i'm not gonna even if that's the best song in the world i have absolutely no inclination to help you because it's just like i don't know you yeah you know and if if you are nice to me, then fine. I'd love to help you. I love to help other artists. Yeah. You know, I'm, I've, I've think the best way to think about music is that if one of us gets up, we all get up. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, I'm not sure if that's common. Uh, I, I'd love to hope it is. I like to think it is, but you know, it, it's not a, a step on toes kind of business. No. Um, especially not at this level. Definitely not. I mean, uh, what's the saying? Uh, a rising tide lifts all ships. Like, if you're working with people and uh -huh. you know you're, you know, you have a good network. Oops. Are oh, you still there? Yep. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, I think you know, you know, certainly at this level, we all need to kind of work together and help each other out because, you know, today we may not be doing anything huge, but. You know, in a few years, you know, you might be doing something great, or someone I'm working with is doing great, or I'm doing great, um, and those those relationships are really what will help each other kind of push the needle forward down the road. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, that's that's why I'm so big on like collaborating with people is just because like if I know you know X person who worked with X person who worked with X person who worked with like Beyonce, yeah. you know, I could, I could say, there's my six degrees of separation. You know, mm -hmm. I, it's funny because I, I, in 2018, I was part of this uh, songwriting competition, which I'm actually a part of this year, um, called Songathon. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the one of the artists who was a part of it, uh, he, you know, he kind of went quiet on Instagram for a bit, and then he came back and he was like, yeah, I just wrote a song with Beyonce. Like I'm a writer on a song that. Beyonce sang for for I think Lion King and I was like, wow, I, I, that is so mind blowing that I just know this person that in some way is related to Beyonce. That I like, I, I mean I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> but, That's crazy. But, so can, can you talk a little bit more about the um the competition? Yeah. So it actually I think 2018 was the first year that they were doing it. It's called Songathon. Um, and basically in its, in its infancy, and I think what it's going to go back to is they put you in small groups. Uh, it was groups of three for us and you have 24 hours to write a song and record it and send it in. And then at, at least in 2018, I know this is how they did it. They, they had a judge vote. Uh, and so they got a top four and then the top four would perform to everybody else. And then the, everybody else would kind of vote to figure out lie in the top four um and so that was one of the greatest experiences ever i mean i met so many people that i still work with and you know hang out with to this day uh and so you know i can't recommend songathon highly enough you know i i feel like for a while i was like <laughs> i was just shouting them out all the time um but i'm a part of this this year and you know because they can't put you in groups uh basically they took everybody in, uh, every song made it, which was great. And there's an audience vote, which, you know, you can, you can win the audience vote. And then there's also a judge's vote. So I think they're completely separate this year. Um, 
but you know again you get to hear so many new artists that are all just kind of grinding and trying to get out there and get their their music out there um and it all actually supports a really great cause i think there it's a it's definitely a covid um awareness group Mm -hmm. um but you know they're they're directing all the awareness over to them you know if you want to donate to them that's great but yeah, so Songathon is a great organization. Um, I've worked with them since 2018, and uh, you know, they're uh, they're doing a great thing for music. Like I said, sure. <laughs> How often do they have these competitions? I think they were doing it yearly. I don't know if it's bi-yearly now or biannually, um, but I know at least they were doing it yearly. Mm-hmm. So it's it started in 2018. So it's still like it's still a baby, mm-hmm. but you know it's. I, I know they did two in New York. They did one in Nashville, and now they're doing this online one. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know they're they're really great. And and again, like they from nothing, they were like, we have Scott Harris as a judge, and Scott Harris is like, wow. yeah. you know, everybody knows Scott Harris. He, mm-hmm. he works with everybody, uh, and so we actually, you know, I got to meet him. We we talked that day, um, so. It's definitely a really, really cool organization. I'm gonna have to look that up. It's in New York too, right? Which is not too far from me. Exactly. Yeah. No. So it it was right in Soho. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had I, I had to travel from Boston in 2018. So that was a big a big journey. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, you know they're pretty close to home now. Um, they they should start running again. You know, yeah. once all of this. Uh, coronavirus is gone you know <laughs> once we're all allowed to be back outside uh, but yeah uh, I, one of the songs that I wrote for it I'm actually planning on releasing on an acoustic EP mm-hmm. um, you know I, I wrote it with two other great songwriters um, Elizabeth Hunter and um, Emily I'm, I'm blanking on her last name <laughs> um, but you know <laughs> Very, very talented songwriters. Um, and um, no, the song that I wrote this year, uh, it's definitely more upbeat, a little more uplifting. Um, I absolutely plan on releasing that in the next couple of months. It's called Distance because uh, they, they give you a prompt mm-hmm. uh, that you have to write the song about. So back then it was Taxi. That was, that was the first prompt I got, but this year it was Distance, um, you know, because... We're all kind of sure, distanced. sure, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> it's funny because cool. I was like, oh, you know, I'll just name the song. Um, I was like, I'll just name the song "Distance." You know, like that—that that has to be. Who else is going to do that? And then everybody else did that, so there's like 50 distances in there. I'm like, way to stand out. <laughs> <laughs> did um, have they done voting for it yet? Uh, yeah, so there's actually online voting. Uh, we're in day, I think, four, okay. um, and it goes on until uh, the 10th uh, of, of this month, mm-hmm. um, which is May. I, I, I said this month, and I was like, I'm going to try to play it off like I remember what month we're in, but I've, I've lost all concept of time. Yeah. I don't even know what day it is. For real. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's going till the 10th of May. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's audience voting. You just have to like put your email in and then your votes confirmed. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the 10th, there's a judge's vote too. Gotcha. Well, good luck, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) Either way. I mean, win or lose. Um, it's, it's a great organization. I'm going to release the song. So sure. Yeah. Um, It's a win. Keep an eye out for distance by Kyle Jordan. When when do you think it's coming out? Do you have a, so it's either going to be you know, late May or early June. Um, you know, it's definitely a summery song. Uh, mm-hmm. And, you know, whether or not it gets to feel summery outside, I feel like we all get, you can all get a little, like, fun little summer anthem. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Very cool. So aside from, um, you know, the, the the competition you're in now, the, the single you're going to be releasing in a little bit, um, you know, what other plans for the future do you have? Like, what does the next month, six months, or year look like? So right now, it's funny because, you know, like I, I feel bad saying it, but, you know, since since we're all quarantined, I've worked with more people 
than I was ever able to work with before because you know I'm I'm kind of far out on Long Island, so to get into the city is a bit of a a hassle. To get anywhere is a bit of a hassle, uh, and you, it's hard to find people to work with remotely. But right now, everybody has to work with you know you're you're working with everybody remotely, um, and so you know I've I've got a ton a ton of collaborations coming out. Um, I have a bunch of songs that are lined up. Um, I have, uh, you know, some local talent that I'm working with. I have some, some, a little, a little different talent. Like usually, I, I stick to pop and R&B and stuff like that. But I have some some EDM artists that I'm working with, um, which I really never thought I would be doing. Um, but you know, it's they've been so so kind and so like gracious with their time, and that you know they're all incredibly talented. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I have, a, I have a bunch of songs that are just in the works um, and it's kind of just going to be like a grind from there, you know, just like promoting, recording and, you know, working as much as I can. Um, but yeah, it, it's, there's a lot of exciting stuff. Um, so that's why I keep telling everybody, like, stay tuned. Like, I know it's been quiet for a bit, but mm-hmm. <laughs> it's going to kind of like explode out this year. No, that's great to hear. And I'm in the same kind of boat. Like, I'm more busy now during quarantine than I have been, you know, certainly the few months before, um, which is a good thing. I'll take it, you know? Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like, you know, it, it feels like I, I keep saying, I'm like, I feel that saying it, but quarantine has been good for business. Like, coronavirus is mm-hmm. making me money somehow. I just. Yeah. <laughs> like,. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so uh, where can yeah, people no, it's, uh, it's... Where, where can people find you online? Like, uh, where do you spend most of your time? You know, what are your handles and all that stuff? Yeah, so if you if you look me up, it's Kyle Jordan official on Facebook at Kyle Jordan Music everywhere else. Um, you could look me up on Spotify, just Kyle Jordan. Um, but yeah, no, I I have a bunch of songs in the works. I post covers on Instagram, so you know, just to keep uh just to keep up the engagement, keep, mm-hmm. you know, keep people entertained. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've, I've been busting my ass a little bit mm-hmm. on uh, just, you know, shooting out content everywhere I can. Uh, and so, yeah, definitely now is a good time to like hop on board. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Well, hey, man, uh, I think this is probably a good place to wrap up. I really appreciate you taking the time to, you know, go over all this stuff, tell us your story, um, and chat with us today. Hey, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, you know, I it sounds disingenuous now that I'm saying it, but you are doing a great thing for music. You know, having local artists and having independent artists on here is such a big deal and giving them a spotlight. Um, so, you know. A small, oh, small well, golf you, clap round you, of applause you. for uh, for you, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate that, and you know, like this is this kind of started off as like a little bit of an experiment, but yeah, I mean, I've been getting a similar response from everyone that's been on, so I think I'm I think I'm doing something good. Plus, I can selfishly yeah, just absolutely. gather information and see what's working for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You'll rule the world that way. I'm just yeah, exactly. You. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, man. Well, thanks again for doing this. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for tuning in and listening to another episode of About to Drop. For more info, please go to our page, www.vertigomusic, that's V-R-T-I-G-O music.com forward slash podcast. And make sure to follow and subscribe to us on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. Thanks and see you soon.